This video is my first ride review of the Niner Rip 9, the 2023 version that's right there. When I say first ride, I mean first ride. Normally I do a shakedown ride before I take it up into the mountains. I ride it locally, get it dialed in. I've got it all set up. I just haven't ridden it yet. So this is literally my first ride. So I'm gonna talk through my thoughts on this bike in the mountains. All right, so first duty of the bike is climbing. Garmin says we're currently at 12%. So far, so good. It, I have the rear locked out. The front does not lock out. The rear pretty much fully locks out on this bike, which is good for climbing these gravel roads. I'm gonna run the bike in the high position today. And then my next ride, I'm gonna run it in the low and just see which I prefer on these kind of trails. These trails are not too technical. The very top is the most technical. And then it's a lot of flowy. So I wanted a quick steering bike today. Already had to stop and make a couple of adjustments, move the brake levers in a little bit and move the saddle back. Climbing on this bike is really good. These tires roll really nicely. Even when I get out of the saddle, the bike does not bob, obviously in the rear. Not much in the front either, so it's nice. Almost to the top. All right, first bit of single track on the bike, which happens to be downhill. Oh. Gotta get these brake pads seated in. I thought I seated them in, but they're not grabbing yet like they should be. This first section is the most technical part of this whole ride today. Oh, this bike is feeling great already. You know, as much as I like the feel of Shimano brakes after they're seated in, the rattling of the cooling fans is something that you have to get used to. As I make my way up a 14% grade single track, I'll just note that the climb switch on the rear shock is pretty low on this bike. It gets hard to reach when you're on a steep pitch. I forgot to engage it and I tried to reach down and it's really hard to control the bike. So. One of those ones that you want to set before the climb especially if it's really steep I, mean, I can reach it but it's just when it's rooty and 14 percent it's a little hard to do running this bike in the high position and i can't speak for the low position yet but the front end is really controllable on those super steep pitches where the front end can wander back and forth so climbing on this bike is excellent it surges forward the cva suspension even like right now i don't even have it locked out because it's kind of rooty and when you put hard efforts on the pedals the bike surges forward that's why i really like the niner cva suspension i was just reminded of another aspect of cva suspension back there I hit the linkage on a really high route that I was going over uphill and that can be a downside but it can also be a good side because it acts as a built-in bash guard so you don't smash your chain ring on a rock and break the teeth so like I showed in my first look video there is a plastic guard over the link so you can roll over rocks and roots and you know just scrape up that replaceable plastic without damaging the link or worse the chain ring just want to mention that since i was just reminded of it another steep steep pitch right here almost ready for a long downhill so 
So I mentioned in my first look video that one of the reasons I wanted to get this bike is I wanted a bike that was a bit more playful than my V2 Transition Sentinel. And so far, I'd say that it's, uh, it's met that goal. This bike was really good in the high position on this trail. I like it. Good choice for this one. And if you don't know what I mean by the high position, it's got a flip chip so I can slacken it out and lower the bottom bracket a little bit if I want to. I really like these 2.6 tires too. I wasn't sure about them, but man, they're stable. Got a nice feel to them. The suspension on this bike feels so good on the downhills. I just stopped to check the rear tire because it was feeling so supple. Now I'm used to a 160, 150 bike. This is 150, 140. But man, it blows. I really love this Fox 36 fork. overgrown into the summer got some foliage greeting my arms welcome me me to the mountains giving me high fives narrow trail be a little careful One of the things that helps the agility of this bike is the, how stiff the frame is. It's got that rib cage around the shock, which really does help with the stiffness. Oh yeah. This trail's so fun. Yeah, these 2.6 tires give a lot of stability. I'm liking them. Thought they were going to be too big. Good choice, Niner. Back at the cabin after the ride and I said most of what I want to say during the ride video but I'll just sum it up by saying that the climbing is excellent. I used the climb switch in the lockout position for gravel roads and anything else I kept it open. The CVA suspension really causes the bike to surge forward when the bike is open that way when you hit a rock or root on a climb it just opens up and the bike does not wander around too much in the high position. I'm going to switch it to the low position. I'm going to make a separate video to tell you about what it feels like in the low position because I'm going to go back out today and ride it in the low position. 
So we'll see how that is for climbing, but in the high position, it's great. Descending, the bike is just incredible. Uh, it's stiff. I felt like the 140 in the rear, 150 in the front was perfect for the trails that I was riding. I did not need any more. I didn't want a bunch less. I mean, the only other bike that I would consider uh, as far as travel is a 140, 130 bike. I really like that travel range too, but this 150, 140 was just perfect for what I was riding. There were some sections where I needed the full travel and I was glad I had it. Uh, the frame stiffness is great with that rib cage around the shock. It really allows the bike to be stiff laterally and the bike is, is agile. And, and like I said in the, in the video, that's the main reason I went from a bike that was longer and slacker and a little bit more travel to this bike is because I wanted a more agile bike. I ride on the East Coast mainly and on the East Coast, you want a bike that's really snappy and agile just because of how tight the trails are, as you saw in the video. So that's going to wrap it up for this first ride video. Stay tuned to the channel because I'm going to do a whole separate video on flipping the chip to the low position and tell you what it's like. So catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching.